So there's so many videos out there on how to make your own X-Pan, but they're not quite right. Today I'm going to show you the right way to do it. Alright, so here's all the stuff that you guys are going to need. You're going to need some scissors. You're going to need some film adapters. You're going to need two of them. I'll tell you in a second why. You're going to need a bulk load canister. You're going to need your roll of film. And last but not least, you're going to need your medium format camera. Alright, so once you got all your gear, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to find one of these guys. It came in with this uh, bulk loading container, but I've also found them in uh, Fuji's uh, 400H uh, rolls. Um, this is pretty important for this uh, method of doing it because you're going to need uh, that part right there. So what you do is you take your sprocket and you take your film. I'm going to use this uh, film. I, I got it. I don't really like it so it's just going to be an example film today. And then you're going to take your scissors. So you're going to take your scissors, your sprocket, your film. And you're going to line up the film with the sprocket. That way you can judge where the hole in the middle is going to take up. I usually like to cut it onto a sprocket hole just so it doesn't rip even more. And just make sure that the sprocket hole is the exact same on the other side. Doesn't have to be perfect. So once you got this cut, this is another important step. Is you're going to take this guy with the hole and there's two different ways. So one it has like kind of a ramp and I'll show you that. Um, you're going to go in the other way so that it has a little bit of tension when you put it in. So this part might be a little tricky. So you're going to snake the, the leader through there. So once you got it in there, you'll have it something like that. And depending on what kind of uh, canister you get, mine's a, a top loading one where you just pop the top off. Um, you might have to do this differently, but I think most of them are like that. But I also cut off the excess of this because you won't need that anymore. Alright, so once you've gotten that on and you've cut off the leader, all you got to do is put it back into the canister. Now you're going to want to put it so that this flat side is with the flat side on this side. That way the film isn't getting pulled um, at a weird angle. So you don't want it like that because then it will ruin the film when it comes out. But put the flat side at the flat side. And then this is the kind you just pop the top on. Kind of goes over that lip. So the top's on. So now you've got your leader in here and the rest of the film is still in the canister that came in. So this is where you take one of your 3D printed adapters. doesn't matter if it's the metal kind or the plastic kind like this one. And I just use this and you're going to turn it into the canister so that you're pulling the film from this can into this one like so. And this one, you should be doing it over like a blanket or something. You don't need to do it in a dark bag. If you have a dark bag, you can. Um, I've just been doing You can do it in a pocket. I've done it in a pocket before. But just to give you an idea, I'm going to pull a little bit out. Don't be doing this while you're doing yours. But you can see that the film is getting pulled into the now, or once was, empty canister. So you can do this under a blanket. In a pocket and a changing bag in a dark room doesn't matter too much since the film has its own kind of light seal on it and not too much of the film is exposed anyways so 
So you'll get to the end, it'll kind of feel like it's uh, getting tighter and tighter, and then you'll hear, hear some noise. That just, know, that just means that you're getting towards the end. And there we have the tape at the very end. So this is now gonna be kind of like your little panoramic uh, cartridge thing. All right, so once you have your panoramic cartridge here, you're gonna wanna get your camera. I'm using the uh, Fuji GW690. Um, it has a six by nine aspect ratio, so you get a little bit wider uh, field of view. You're gonna wanna use something more than a 645 for this or else you're not really gonna get that full panoramic view. 67 probably is good. Six by nine is probably my favorite. You can do six by six too, but it's not as accurate. So just pop it open. And then depending on what kind of camera you're using, you're basically doing the exact same thing. So you're gonna load with your adapters. And this is why you'll need two of them. So you'll put your adapters on one end. Stick that in the take up. And then you'll need adapters for the other side. And then you're just gonna spread that across. And load it in like a normal camera. Just like that. The only other thing you're gonna need to change is the pressure plate. So right now I have it at 220 and that's what you're gonna want it at. Um, that's only because the 120 film has the paperback so it makes it a little bit um, thicker. And so you can flip the side. So there's the regular 120 and you just flip it over and the side's a little bit thicker since you don't have the paperback. And to be honest, I haven't noticed that much of a difference. I feel like I've skipped it once or twice on here. Um, and that's it. The only other issue with this camera in particular, and it doesn't uh, apply to all the cameras, I'm not sure what um, like a Mamiya would do or whatnot, but this roller right here has to roll with the advanced lever in here. So if you don't have anything um, in here keeping it uh, tight against the film, this is just gonna spin and your, your advanced lever is not gonna let you advance. So if you have any issues like that, I kinda, what I did was I took some ceiling foam um, that you'd find like around the edges of cameras and I just taped that, well it's sticky back, so I just sticky backed it to this roller um, to give it more pressure so that this roller will advance with the other Advanced. It's kind of annoying and I think this is the only camera that uses that But once you have that in You'll load the camera And you will advance it Till you can't advance no more and now you're on frame one And then if you unlock the camera you can start shooting so Frame two and so on. Now for this demonstration, I'm gonna show you what the inside of the camera is doing. Since I'm not gonna use this film, um, I'll just show you. And what we did in the beginning there and then why we put it on that one side is so that the film will slip out of that and then back into its own container. So now you have a light sealed container that you can pop out and it's just like a regular container. You don't need any changing bag to open up the back and take it out and be all delicate. This just goes from this one into this one and then you can load another one right away. So either you could make multiples with these, buy a few 
um, of these, or you can cut these uh, up individually and then load them. But this method is by far my favorite. It's kind of a foolproof method in my opinion. So that's basically it. I am a fan of this method. I feel like nobody else um, on YouTube has kind of any similar thing. So I felt like you guys probably would like to know a good tried and true method of uh, DIY X-Pan. Let me know how it turns out for you guys. I'm very interested to know.